Well, tell me how you're doing. I am here. So let's see. Let's make sure I am on the right channel. I hope so. Everyone's here. Look at me. I've cleaned off my blackboard, my whiteboard. I keep saying blackboard, but it's my whiteboard. That's where I've been doing all of my videos. Um, so I don't know if you guys know, but I'm knee deep in reading Rehab of the Hand as if I am studying for the hand therapy all over again because I'm doing the um, CHT mentorship program and it's been really nice. It's been really nice to um, you know, connect with a bunch of therapists that are passionate about becoming a certified hand therapist and I'm excited to be able to help them be able to prepare for the exam and just be a signing board and I always talk about um, it's not always about being there and asking questions because sometimes we're like, well, shit, you know, what's the question I should be asking? I'm not really sure what question I should be asking, but there's a lot to be said about being in the room when someone else is asking the question. Now, I happen to be in a, um, like a coaching group myself. And I think it's like when I first started, I was like, oh, I don't know what questions to ask. And now, I'm a lot more, I do more know what questions to ask and it's helpful sometimes I start to write out my questions and I'm able to almost in a way solve my own problem, but it's always nice to say, let me ask it anyway and see if there's anyone else who has like a different response or maybe um, it just sometimes feels good when you know the answer and you're just looking for confirmation. And so that's a really huge important part of our mentorship program too because you might know the answer and it just feels really good, builds your confidence and there is something hugely valuable in terms of building your confidence. And so um, that's one of the things that I'm helping uh, my students do. And the other thing is, um, you know, just always having someone there that you can rely on and, and you know, answer questions for you. I know I get, you know, um, questions sometimes. Sometimes I can get to them right away, sometimes I can't. And um, so yeah, so it's been, it's been really um, a wonderful program I'm excited to be a part of. And it's, you know, it doesn't mean that there hasn't been any challenges. So it's definitely been um, challenging. So let me share with you something that I read and I decided to write down because it's, it's a great re reminder. Um, I do these uh, folders and I write my notes in and stuff like that and every once in a while I'll have something and I decide to write on the back of it because it didn't really fit with what I was doing. But um, somebody said, I'm never disappointed when we're not good at something because I think, um, <laughs> Hold on, let me start over. Um, quote, I'm never disappointed when we're not good at something because I think, well, think how good it's going to be um, to work. How, how, think how good it's going to work when we're good at it, right? Dear Lord, have mercy. Let me say it again. <laughs> this is actually from Jeff Bezos, the owner of Amazon. And when he started that, he didn't think, um, you know, it's going to be anything. And now it's, he's like the richest man on earth. There's this ginormous company that is just gobbling everybody up, regardless of whether you believe it or not. Like people just love it. But he said, I'm never disappointed when we're not good at something because I think, well, you know, how good is it going to work when we are good at it? And it really reminded me because um, when I started Hand Therapy Secrets, I had, a, um, I had a lot of doubts and stuff like that. And I think a lot of people look at me and think that I don't have doubts. <laughs> but I promise you, I have doubts, right? And it's not that I don't have doubts, it's just that I'm able to kind of work um, beyond my doubts. And I surround myself with a lot of people who believe in me. I have a lot of people who I surround myself with that support me. 
and not just to say like I'm good at something or I can do it rah 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 but I surround myself with people who tell me I'm on the wrong path and can help me fix that right so it's not just like oh you can do it rah 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 um, but there are key people that help me to make sure I'm making some of the best decisions that I can but it reminded me because when I first started hand therapy secrets I had a lot of doubt about <laughs> If I could do it or not, like, can I get? Uh, you know, I'm I'm a naturally silly person. Um, I like to make jokes and I like to, you know, kind of like play around and stuff like that. So when I first started, I was like, oh, I don't really know if I could do this, and I don't know if I could um, get on camera. I don't know if I could really teach people. Do people really want, um, you know, to hear what I have to say? So it wasn't that I didn't have any doubts, it did. Uh, but the more I do it, the better I am. And so I look back and I have to think, man, you know, everyone who comes to me and says, oh, I'm not, a, I'm, I'm not such a great therapist, uh, I'm not such a great hand therapist, and, and all that good stuff um, that they're saying. And it's not because we were meant to be immediately good at things. It's dependent on the amount of work that you're putting into it. And I get reminded about this pretty much daily. I was uh, in my yoga class today and I've been doing yoga for on and off, more on and off for the last two years. And I'm finally getting to certain positions that I was like, oh, wow, like I can do, not only can I do it, but now I'm able to do them a little bit more consistently. And it's not because all of a sudden I did it and I was so good at it. It's because I kept working on it and that's why this um, quote really resonated with me. I'm never disappointed when we're not good at something because I think, well, think how good it's going to work when we are really good at it. So if you are an occupational therapist that's just getting out and you're like, oh, you know, I'm not really sure about this. I'm not really sure if I'm on the right path and did I spend and waste a lot of money <laughs> becoming an occupational therapist? I can tell you I had the same problem when I came out of school. I was like, holy shit, I am like doing what, you know? And working with the human body is not that clean. It's not that glorious. Um, but it took me a few years before I really fell in love with my career and so much of it is because we're really not so great when we become occupational therapists and it takes a little while to develop ourselves as occupational therapists. Same happens when then I became, went into a certain position where I became a hand therapist and I wasn't so good at being a hand therapist either. And I was like, oh my God, am I gonna be able to do it? Can I, can I make it as a hand therapist? Can I be a really good hand therapist? Can I be a really awesome certified hand therapist? And at the beginning you're like, I don't know if I can do it, but if you keep doing it, you keep practicing, you keep working, you keep taking courses, and you keep striving to be the best version of yourself, then you will have that opportunity to become the best version of yourself and to become the best person within your career. Now, um, and that's you know one of the reasons why that quote resonated with me so much and it's because I have gotten to a stage where you know I do feel really comfortable and I don't have to think that hard my my brain can like be easy when I'm working with patients I can see and spot things really quickly and the answers come to me fast and the questions flow really easily and then I always end up <laughs> putting myself into a challenging position of like holy crap like you know now can I do this now can I do that and um, that's you too so that's you too so if you are an OT and you're just not really sure you know keep striving keep at it and take classes because just because you got done with school doesn't mean you're you got done with learning look at me like I have literally three textbooks opened out on my desk well I'm not gonna show three textbooks open out on my desk a notebook where I'm writing notes and stuff like that um, and the studying continues because that's how you become the best version of yourself and that's how you become an expert and um, that's how you can get longevity and fulfillment in your career now I know that there's a lot I, I see it all the time but like oh if you're unhappy you know whatever whatever um, 
and I don't I try not to listen to those things because I choose to be happy I choose to be fulfilled in my career and so I just you know sometimes have to break away and study and and get those things done so that I can be the best version of myself and um, I'm in a point where I have forgotten how hard it is and so it's been humbling to kind of take a step back and make sure that I explain things a certain way and speak in a certain way so that um, I don't take that for granted and I don't just you know, brush it off as like you should know it um, but I've been putting out some videos I hope that they help you um, and if there's anything else you know just let me know I'm about to launch orthosis 101 again so um, let me see did I talk about did I have any splints lately um, I think I did a post but I don't think I did details about it we had a really complex um, injury and he required a, a particular splint I should take a picture of it because we did a, a he had a um, extensor tendon he had a really huge crush injury he had an extensor lacer um, laceration of his um, EPL so he had that initially repaired but then it didn't recover very well it was kind of a failed surgery because he had so many other issues going on. So what they did is they took the the tendon of the indices of the index finger because we have two tendons in um, the index finger, so we have an extra one. So they took that tendon, transferred it over here so that he can have extension again. And it looks really good, so I had to make a splint. But at the same time, he also had capsulectomies. So a lot of times we can know what kind of surgeries they had based on this, um, the scars and stuff like that. So he had capsulectomies and I needed to make him a whole different splint to keep his MPs into um, flexion. And so it's really about thinking, well, what does he need first? Well, he needs to protect that um, extensor tendon first and then what does he need second? It's the MP into um, flexion. And so I was able to make um, basically a volar, a wrist control, thumb extension type of splint. And then um, I made a separate dorsal component so that he could remove during the day to move and to exercise and then wear it at night. So we made him essentially a long dorsal block splint, but it wasn't completely long because he already had the wrist component. So we just made him a wrist, um, a dorsal block. So it went from all the way covering all his IPs down his MPs because we needed to keep his IP straight. Had a procedure there too. So it kept his IP straight, flexed his MPs, and then um, had him um, probably a little, just a little bit below the wrist just for anchoring and support. So I'll send you, uh, you know, I'll put a picture up there. Um, probably it comes tomorrow. I should probably take a picture of that and, and send it to you. But it's just about problem solving through and say, okay, what's what's the most important? What's second important? How do we make both surgeries? They're completely different surgeries. But how do we make both surgeries successful or as successful as they could possibly be? And um, we've been just really excited about the progress he's made. Did some wound care on it today. If you go into the stories, you might have seen some pictures of it. Um, but wound care, you know, outside of uh, orthosis, uh, fabrications, wound care is my other thing that I try to put out stuff and uh, hopefully going to create a class um, all around that because those are two skilled areas, like highly skilled areas that as a hand therapist we need to have and a lot of people tell me that they're sort of missing that. So anyway, um, if you are those are the things I'm doing. Let me know what you're doing and let me know if you resonate with this. Um, I'm never disappointed when we're not good at something because I think, well, how good is it going to work when we are good at it? How good is it going to be when you're really good at it and you feel confident, you feel comfortable and you're being the best version of yourself? So. That's it for me today. I didn't really get so many questions that I wrote down. Um, so I will wait for you next time.